Hi, and welcome to the fourth episode of Knits in the Wild podcast. I'm Jen, and I'm coming to you from the capital region of upstate New York, um, just outside of Albany, and welcome. So today, um, I like to talk about a bunch of different things. Today might be a little short because I have a lot going on today. Um, still have to get in a workout and I have plans later this afternoon, which I will talk about, but yeah. So let's start off with what I'm wearing. I have finally finished my bougie sweatshirt. This is the um, Throw Over Sweater by Andrea Mowry, and I love it. It came out so nice. I knit it in um, CC's Wool Cozy, Local Cozy Cordale yarn, um, which is local to me. I talked about that yarn a couple episodes ago. Um, my cat is now scratching me, so that's fun. Anyway, so CC's Cord Cordale in the color Falling Leaves. Here, let me see if I can stand up and show how lovely it came out. Um, yeah, it was, it's my first Andrea Mallory sweater pattern, which I loved and it, it fits perfectly. So this um, contrasting color is Vincycle Yarns in the colors um, Salty Dog, Deep Bump, and, or Rusted Rainbow and Deep Bump. And it is very warm. Right now I'm getting a little hot, so we'll see how long it lasts. But uh, sadly, this is the only finished object I have to share today because I have been working on another sweater and I don't have any really small projects that um, I have finished. So I started my Halu or Halu sweater. This is a top down sweater by Caitlin Hunter with a lace work motif that I showed you my swatch that I started last time. Um, so I have a, quite a bit to say about this. Let me see if I can articulate everything. So this is done in a v-neck round yoke shaping. It's v-neck shaping, which just involves some increasing and decreasing. It looks more challenging than it is. And if you're familiar with her easy V, it's the same neckline for that. But instead of color work, it's a lace motif with some bobbles. And I talked about the bobbles last time. And I decided based on a comment that I received from somebody, I can't remember your name, I'm sorry, but thank you for the comment, to make them smaller using three stitches instead of five. And I did that. And they came out a little small. You can see, kind of see them, which is what I wanted. I didn't want them to be too pronounced, but some of them just kind of sucked back into the fabric. So it looks like there's only three here. I don't know if you can see. They're hard to see with this dark fabric, but like you can kind of see one here popping out. But the other one, some of them just kind of sucked right back into the fabric, which is fine. Um, not a big deal. It still has the look that I wanted. I absolutely love it and I love the fabric. It creates this, this is um, the fiber company's Cumbria fingering, which is a blend of mohair and wool held with Rowan's cashmere haze, which is a cashmere, I think it's cashmere silk um, and alpaca blend which is just the softest sweater I've ever made. Well, I don't know if that's true, but it's definitely one of them. But I cannot wait to have this done and be able to wear it because it's going to be absolutely cozy, but classy and like fan, like I could wear it, like it could be fancy, <laughs> dress it up, dress it down, I can definitely wear it to work. Um, and I can wear it with jeans. It would be, I just, I'm so excited about this. So right now, I am on Body Island, working my way through the body, which is going a little slower than I would like because it's um, a DK weight, 
So you, this was worsted weight, so this just flew, but this one's going a little slower, but that's okay. I'm enjoying it. Um, and the same lace motif is on the arm, the sleeve cuffs, which I'm going to do because I think it looks so cute. Um, some people left it out when I looked at the patterns on Ravelry, but I liked it. And I just love, again, I just love this yarn. Okay, so that's the Halo. So, of course, I am planning my next sweater project. I might take a break from sweaters after this. I don't know. Probably not, but... I kind of want to focus on smaller accessories, but I just, I like knitting sweaters, so I don't know if I'm going to stop, but anyway, so I ordered, actually I haven't even opened this package from Webs. Let's open it together. I am planning on making this sweater called the Forager. I will pop a photo up um, and show you guys what it is. But it's by the designer, I believe is Melody Hoffman. I've never made anything of hers. But I ordered some Flava Lope yarn for this sweater. And it's unspun Icelandic wool, soft and airy. Um, I have never knit with unspun yarn, so this should be fun. I'm going to open it. Let's see. I posted a reel a couple days ago about this yarn, but this is what it looks like. And I have I had a hard time finding the start where this where it comes out. Um, I don't I don't know the best way to do that without ribbing it. So I have to do some research. If anyone has any tips about knitting with this yarn, let me know in the comments, please, because I've never knit with it, and I'm planning on holding it with um, a drops alpaca brushed alpaca in black and that hasn't arrived yet so I can't show you that but I ordered that from Wool Warehouse and I'm hoping for a nice soft cozy sweat another soft cozy sweater with this but yeah give me all your tips for knitting with unspun yarn please so that is my next planned project I can share with you some acquisitions, or a acquisition, another, um, so I joined the Farmer's Daughter Fibers Sock Squad this year, and I just got, now I don't know if this is January's or February's, I think I was too late in joining for January, so this might be February's, but I haven't opened it yet, so I wanted to open it with you guys. I don't know what it looks like. I don't. I know it's sock yarn. That's all I know. And that the theme for this subscription is wildflowers, which is just perfect for me. If you know me, I love wildflowers. So it comes in this really cute, cute little sticker on the bag here. A little package. So this must be February. <laughs> the color is just oh my god, I love it. It's this is this dusty rose color, probably one of my favorite colors of all time. Beautiful speckled yarn, sock yarn, and this is called this February sock yarn called Rocky Mountain Pearls. That must be the base. Eighty percent superwash BFL, twenty percent nylon 400 yards and the mini is 80 or 80 yards 
20 grams and that the colorway is bitter root. Oh my God, look at that. So pretty. Definitely gonna make socks with these. Oh, I love it. And this subscription is pretty affordable. I believe it's only about $30 for that, which is like a typical sock in our press, but I'm very happy with that. So next up, I wanted to share that I, I signed up for an beginning, a beginner spinning class that was held yesterday at uh, CC's Yarn Shop, um, which is one of my local yarn shops. And it was so fun. I learned how to spin. Never spin, I never have spun, never have I spun yarn in my life. I have no clue about how to do it. But it was really fun and surprisingly a lot easier than I thought it would be. But um, I'm still getting the hang of it. I'm going back there today for their open spinning so I can practice because I do eventually want, I eventually want to get a spinning wheel so I can start hand spinning. But I don't have my yarn to share because I left it there and I'm hoping that I can get it when I go there today. But I tried, um, she had us using the Ashford traditional wheels which was the one pedal treadle which I did like and then after that I tried another one that was a double treadle which I liked also and that was a castle style wheel and I think that was a bit more expensive more out of my budget so I probably won't end up getting one of those but if I do get one it might be the Ashford Kiwi I want to see if I can try one today so when I went to CC's, I exchanged, I had two skeins of this fall leaves colorway left over. So she let me exchange that for some roving. So I know nothing about spinning. So forgive me if I'm like, sound like I don't know what I'm talking about because I really don't. So I did buy some roving, which I will show. So yesterday she had us start spinning with this Jacob wool, which is a very toothy, rustic wool that is easy for beginners to learn with. So I will pop a photo of what my finished yarn looked like because I did take a picture of it. And when I edit this video, I'm going to try to do it after today's spinning session. So I will probably add in another clip of that if I can still get it. So. This is what we used yesterday. I ended up buying some so I can practice with it today when I go back there for open spinning. And she taught us how to draft and how to um, ply the yarn afterward, which I didn't get to try plying. So I'm hoping I can try today because I, I need to, I'm a very like hands-on learner. I need to do it before I can, you know, I need to, do it myself to, in order to learn how to do it. But um, yeah, this is really soft and fluffy. So this is Jacob wool that came is from sheep from her farm, like her own. These are from her own sheep, which is really cool. Nice gray. So I did see this other roving there at the shop that I picked up for future me when I have a wheel and actually know how to spin properly and make something decent because I couldn't resist it because it was so beautiful. Look at this. Now, I believe this is merino with some tweedy bits in there. This is just amazing. I did try spinning with merino while we were there and it wasn't as hard as I thought it would be because it's a little more slippery and smooth than the Jacob and it I just couldn't resist. So I got two four ounce balls of this roving, which I'm hoping to make some yarn out of eventually once I know what I'm doing. Um, but it's really nice that CC has this open spin where you can go and just borrow a wheel and try out different wheels. If you're interested in purchasing one, you can purchase one right through her shop. 
and they put it together for you and everything. So I think once I decide what I'm gonna get for sure, and once I can save up some money for one, I think I'm gonna order it through her. And yeah, that would be great. She's so knowledgeable. It was such a nice, um, nice class. So if you are in this area and you wanna take a spinning class, I suggest taking one with her, with Cece, because she was great. So I also wanted to chat a little bit about sewing. So I know this is supposed to be a knitting channel, but because I'm crafty and I'm sure a lot of you are crafty also, I started sewing again. So I learned how to sew last year um, when I had COVID last year. I, I got a sewing machine for my birthday. So I had COVID like two days after my birthday. and. That was when I got my sewing machine and I had signed up to take a bag making class online with Clumhouse. So if you're familiar with sewing, you might um, already know about Clumhouse, but they make, they sell kits for bag making. So I signed up for their class, which was an online, like three month immersive class, like cl online class where they, there were live Zoom sessions, um, boards where you could go on and ask questions um very like a very nice community and they send you the kits and they have online like videos that you can watch tutorials on as you're doing as you're reading the instructions for the pattern they have it's like a a video class that goes right along with it so you can sew right along with the video which i loved because i really need that like do intensive how to's when it comes to learning new things so for our first project last year we made these little dot kits and they give you everything for the project all the leather the zipper the rivets and all the materials that you're going to need to make them so you don't have to go out to the store and pick out all these things and if you don't if you're a beginner like i was i don't know the first thing about what i'm going to need to make something like this so the class was great because it gives you everything you're gonna need. So I made this and I use this for my sewing stuff inside. It's a lined wax canvas. So it's so easy. If you're, I am a beginner. I could, I've never sewn anything aside from like the pillowcase in uh, sixth grade home ec class. So I, I made this not knowing really anything about how to sew. And she also teaches you about your machine. So this is my machine. It's the um, Singer Heavy Duty. It's a really good beginner machine. And I wanted a heavy duty one because I wanted to make wax canvas bags and sew with thicker fabrics, which this is perfect for. So I made that dob kit. And here is the pattern for that. So they give you a PDF version and they also give you this um, paper instruction kit very very cool so yesterday I was in a sewing mood so I decided to make another dop kit <laughs> and this I might use for like maybe knitting notions or like toiletries um, but it's really cute um, I don't have any leather to put on it yet. I might go to the store and get some, but if you can see the lining is canvas. And this was just some wax canvas I got online. I can't even remember where I got it. But I've made a couple of project bags with it. Um, I do want to get into making more project bags. But, you know, I only have so much time. <laughs> I have too many crafty hobbies. like. Oh, I want to do them all. So, if you're into sewing and want to make bags, I suggest Clumhouse. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. Um, I know this episode was a little short, but um, I will have more projects to share soon, hopefully. I hope that everyone is having a great weekend. I hope you're enjoying your crafting, your knitting, your spinning, your sewing. Um, 
So if you made it this far and watched this video, leave me a comment below as, um, telling me what you're working on. I'd love to see everyone's projects. Okay, uh, have, a, have a nice uh, rest of your day, guys. Bye.